Hello, it's Kick-Ass Woman time. I'm Jenny Dye, author of the Bragdon Chronicles. When I'm not writing, I love to learn about kick-ass women in history. I'm here to tell you about one of them. The woman who started this whole thing is definitely a kick-ass woman, but so is every woman who has completed what she envisioned. I'm excited to tell you about this because I'm preparing for an 11-week trip to Alaska this summer. And yes, I'm going in the summer because I'm really not that into being cold, unlike the women you're going to hear about. Envision this with me. Hi! Hey, hey, Hi! Called out the musher. Mush! Hi! All right! Let's go! The beautiful dog team responded to her commands and sprang into action, the team moving as one. The musher prepared herself for the racing speed of her team. The lead lines grew taut in her hands as her dogs set their pace. The adrenaline coursed through her veins as the dogs began picking up speed. It was her first time for the big race. Months of training, grueling exercises, and many, many shorter races had her and her dogs in top physical and mental condition. She knew she was ready. She knew her dogs were too. Nothing remained between her and the finish line except over 1,150 miles of the roughest, most beautiful terrain on the planet. Jagged mountain ranges, frozen rivers, dense forest, desolate tundra, and miles and miles of windswept coast. In addition, she knew temperatures would fall far below zero, winds could cause complete loss of visibility, and there would be long hours of darkness and treacherous climbs. It's known as the last great race on earth. It's a race run in Alaska by mushers and dogs. It's called the Iditarod. Each team of 12 to 16 dogs and their musher will cover these 1,150 plus miles in 10 to 17 days. The idea of the actual race was born in the mind of Dorothy G. Page, the mother of the Iditarod, one serious kick-ass woman. It all began with a phone call. The phone rang at Joe Reddington's house one dark Alaska evening. Hello, it was Dorothy. Joe, I have an idea. Why don't we start up the Iditarod Trail again and make it a race? There's no excuse to let history die out. And don't you think mushers from around Alaska would come? I just can't sit back and watch that trail be lost anymore. We'll lose it forever if someone doesn't do something. Will you help me, Joe? You're a musher. You know people. They'll listen to you. We can bring it back and keep it alive, don't you think? Joe's answer, as history proves, was a resounding yes, and he became known as the father of the Iditarod. You see, Dorothy Page was an Alaskan historian who didn't want the Iditarod Trail, which had once been the major thoroughfare through Alaska, to be lost. By the mid-1960s, most people in Alaska didn't even know there was an Iditarod Trail or that dog teams had played such an important part in Alaska's early settlement. Dorothy was determined to change that. But what was so special about the trail? The Iditarod Trail has a rich history as a supply line from the coastal towns to the interior mining camps and even beyond to the west coast communities of Alaska. Mail and supplies went in, gold came out, all by dog sled. Legends were born and heroes were made. In 1925, part of that trail became a life-saving highway for Nome, whose population was suffering from diphtheria. The serum was brought in by bravely determined mushers and their faithful, life-saving, hard-driving dogs. Dorothy believed in the history of these people and their dogs. She didn't want it to be lost. The first races in 1967 and 1969 were short ones, just 27 miles. It was going to take quite a while for the 1,150-mile trail to be cleared after decades of non-use. Until the U.S. Army decided to run an exercise testing the use of snow machines, as Alaskans know them, snowmobiles to most of the rest of us. During that long winter, the soldiers cleared the trail and made it usable again. Just four years after the last short race, 22 mushers followed the soldiers. 1,150 mile path to Nome, the last great race on earth, was born. Many believed it was a crazy idea to send mushers into the vast, uninhabited Alaskan wilderness. Many opposed this race into death. Nothing could stop Dorothy, Dorothy's dream, however. Most of the mushers are Alaskan, but over 400 finishers have come from Canada, Czechoslovakia, France, Great Britain, Germany, Norway, Switzerland, Italy, Japan, Austria, Australia, Sweden, the Soviet Union, and from about 20 states in the United States. The list of participants, winning records, and legends is pages long. Books have been written and movies made around the stories of trial and hardship, victory, and success. 
Yet each person, and his or her dogs, have accomplished a feat few of us would even attempt. Each one of them has gone the distance and is part of the Iditarod legend. And these legends have Dorothy to thank, because she had vision and put her passionate belief into action, inspiring others to join her along the way. She was a true kick-ass woman. I know most of us will never run such a grueling race, but each of us faces challenges and difficulties. And each of us who attempts something new and different will be at the receiving end of comments like, it'll never work, you're crazy, and give up before you make a fool of yourself. But for those of you who decide to go the distance and never quit, pure satisfaction, boundless joy, and a deep sense of fulfillment will be yours. You may have your own personal Iditarod race to run. Don't give up. Give it your all and you too can accomplish what you desire. You too can become a kick-ass woman. That's all for today. Subscribe to my channel below because I'll be adding many more stories of other kick-ass women. If you want to check out my best-selling historical novel series that focuses on some pretty amazing kick-ass women, you can use the link below to buy the first one for just 99 cents. And as long as you're clicking things, I'd appreciate a like and a share if that's true for you. Have a great day, and I'll be back soon.